Ukraine pretty much completely deadlocked Russia across the entire country, and now it will be almost impossible for Russians to advance anywhere. And at the same time, as soon as Ukraine receives all the advanced and offensive weapons from the West, this is when they're gonna go for the ultimate victory. And you know what, it does feel like that Russia understands this as well, even though they do not want to acknowledge this. That is why potentially they are preparing to completely give up. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. And our first picture is the photo of Dmitry Rogozin, who finally recovered from his buttocks injury. Next we go to the capital of Russia, Moscow, where we can see the police dogs, who are already in the winter holidays mood. And if we take this picture out of the context, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty cute. Next we go down all the way to Odessa, and as you can see from this picture, Ukrainians removed uh, the monument for Ekaterina II. And right now, instead of this statue, there is a Ukrainian flag. And the reason they did it, most likely, is to separate the history of Ukraine from the history of Russia as much as possible. Our next stop brings us to Khmelnytsky region, and as you can see right here, the security services of Ukraine did another search in a Ukrainian monastery. And since we started talking about the security services of Ukraine, right here we have yet another picture of them visiting the mayor of Poltava. During this visit, the mayor has been officially suspected, because allegedly he was giving the information about the armed forces of Ukraine to the Russian army. Okay, right now I will be talking about something that is impossible to ignore. The most recent yet another mass shelling of Russia against the territory of Ukraine. There are obviously dozens of photos and videos, but because of YouTube demonetization, I can only show the blurred versions. But if you want to see the uncensored ones, I uploaded some of them to my Discord and the rest will be available on my Patreon. And if you want to see these photos and videos and show the support of the channel, the links will be down below. Alright, and to begin with, we go to the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, which has been under the most severe attacks today. And reportedly, according to the Ukrainian sources, they were able to intercept 16 missiles which were going towards this city. The majority of these attacks were against the energy infrastructure of Ukraine, and the falling debris from these missiles were falling on the residential areas. And according to the mayor of the city, Vitaly Klitschko, approximately 40% of Kiev lost the energy. And as you can see right here, for example, those people who are hiding on the subway stations were left in the complete darkness. Some more attacks have been reported in another major city in the east, Kharkov. And as we move all the way down, according to the head of Mikolaev region Vitaly Kim, five Russian missiles were intercepted above the Black Sea. Another major city which has been heavily targeted by Russians was Odessa. And reportedly, incredible 21 missiles have been intercepted. Then we move to the northwest, to Ivano-Frankovsk. And as you can see from this picture, the entire missile landed inside residential building, but has not detonated. And ultimately, another city which has been affected was the city of Lviv, which lost approximately 90% of its power as a result of these attacks. There has even been a missile which fell on the territory of Belarus to the west of Pinsk. But as of right now, according to the current information, this is only a missile booster of a Ukrainian missile S-300. Which most likely means, just like with the incident in Poland last month, this was just the attempt of Ukrainians to intercept a Russian missile, and the falling debris fell in another country. According to Belarusian soldiers, the missile had still its detonator intact, and that is why it had to be carried to a special place to be destroyed. And then right here we have the video presented to us by the Ministry of Defense of Belarus, 
which shows us the potential trajectory of this missile. And because of this video, many people wanted to assume that for some reason Ukraine wanted to intentionally attack Belarus. This time it was not only Russia who attacked Ukraine, because Ukraine also had its own retribution. And we will talk about this in more details very soon. But for now, just a couple more words about the most recent mass shelling and some conclusions. At some point, as you can see from this map, the air raid sirens were sounding across the entire territory of Ukraine. And according to the general staff of Ukraine, Russia launched 69 missiles and Ukraine was able to intercept 54 of them and 11 Shahid drones. These were primarily Kliber missiles, even though some of them reportedly were anti-radar missiles. Which, to be honest, kinda looks like that Russia is getting pretty low on its inventories of regular missiles, that is why they have to use the special ones. The majority of them were launched from the Black Sea, Rostov region, as well as Caspian Sea, and Russians used their ships and bombers. And in reply to the assumption that Russia is getting critically low on its missiles, the Ministry of Defense of Russia released this picture in their official Telegram channel, which basically says that Klibors will never be over. And ultimately, as a result of all this, here we have the map, which shows us the locations which are affected by these attacks. The cities with the fire icons are those places where explosions have been reported. And the areas with the Ukrainian flag are the areas where the Ukrainian air defense system was completely successful. With every single mass attack like this, Russia, to be honest, is doing more harm to itself rather than to Ukraine. Because just think about this, the effectiveness of these attacks decreases every single time. But on the other hand, Russians are quickly depleting its inventories and basically forcing Ukrainians to fight until victorious end. Eventually Ukraine will prevail and I will be here to report on this wonderful news. And if you don't want to miss them, just please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, because this weekend I'm planning to do a Q&A and this will be your perfect opportunity to ask me any questions you want. Ok, so, right now it's no longer just Russia which can attack another country, because Ukraine can now also attack the territory of Russia. Specifically, according to the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Oleksiy Danilov, in case Ukraine considers that in order for its safety it needs to be somewhere else, Ukraine will no longer ask for permissions and just do it. And I mean he obviously implies that in case needed, Ukraine will continue attacking the territory of Russia, which they have been doing so far. And right here, for example, we have a picture from Jankoy, located on Crimean Peninsula, where there was a Russian air defense system in action. But then, as we go to the actual territory of Russia, we have a video from Belgorod, where we can see Russians intercepting a Ukrainian missile. Moving to the northwest, to Bryansk region, we have some reports about loud noises. According to the Russian side, this was a work of the air defense system, but according to Ukrainians, the drone was able to successfully destroy the S-300 system. And then, as we go to already notorious Engels, located in Saratov region, we can see that there was even more activity of Russian air defense systems. According to the governor of Saratov region, Roman Bosargen, let me say this word correctly, an unidentified <laughs> object was intercepted above the area. And I mean, obviously, there was not a single sign of a panic. But as we take a look at this map, we can see that the entire airspace above Saratov region was closed today. And in addition to that, those planes which were already on the runways were asked to return to the terminals and the passengers to go home. But okay. <laughs> And now let me give you a very quick update from the south. 
And first of all, reportedly, the artillery duels between Russians and Ukrainians continued on both sides of Dnipro River, with the main concentration of explosions being heard in Kakhovka region. At the same time, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, there has been even more evidence about the continued rotation of forces of Russians between Kherson region and Zaporozhye region. And they also mentioned that Russians are now very much less likely to conduct any form of offensive in Zaporozhye. Most likely, the reason for such relocations is to construct at least the defensive structures and to try and slow down the pace of Ukrainians. Because just like in the East, it looks like that the main goal of Russians at this very moment is to stall all the front lines as much as possible, and we will talk about this in much more details very soon. And to make it even worse for the Russian army, <laughs> Ukrainians were able to reportedly destroy another S-300 missile system in addition to eight other pieces of military equipment along the Parozhia front line. So pretty much yeah, the situation for them is pretty bad. But wait, there is more. Let me give you a similar update now from the East. And once again, according to the same report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainians continue to focus their attacks along Svatve Krimina Highway. And the main direction for Russians was next to Bakhmut and to the west of Donetsk region. This past day, Ukrainians reportedly were massively pushing Russians in Krimina, fighting from the forest and inflicting incredible damage to the manpower and to the military vehicles. And according to yet unconfirmed information, the Ukrainian soldiers are only less than two kilometers away from this city. And Russians did collect almost everything they got left to perform some of the final attacks against Spirne, Yakovlika, Solidar, Bakhmutskia, Bakhmut, Avdivka, Marinka, but Ukrainians repelled the majority or maybe even all of <laughs> these attacks. There have even been some other reports that Russians are bringing even more reinforcements to Luhansk region as they prepare for the final serious and decisive actions. But you know what? I personally do not think that they will have enough capabilities to launch another offensive which most likely means they are only going to construct defensive structures and try to slow down Ukrainians. And most likely, sooner or later, they will fail in this as well. Because according to the head of the defense intelligence of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, Ukraine was able to fully deadlock Russia <laughs> in this war. What he basically means is that at this very moment, neither Russia nor Ukraine can advance significantly anywhere across the front lines, but Ukraine still has a much better advantage. And the main reason for this is that Ukraine will only continue receiving the support from the Western countries, including the weapons. But on the other hand, the supply of Russians is very limited, mostly to whatever they have left. Because, I mean, uh, let's be honest, the level of support that Russia receives from another countries is not even close to be matched to the level of support by the West. Budanov was also talking about that he does not believe that Russia along with Belarus invade from the north of Ukraine, simply because they do not have enough their manpower, military vehicles and equipment as it is, let alone opening another front line. Which, as you can already see, is the direct confirmation of my own assumptions I've been making for the last couple of weeks. Because of this, he also added that Russia might return to one of its favorite tactics, which is winning battles with the number of people. And in order to achieve this, they will need to do another, most likely, partial mobilization in the next year. But because of this, the Russian leadership is also risking to lose the support of the regular Russian people. Imagine this, first you tell them that you will take Kyiv in three days and the war will be over before you know it. The second thing happened is that the war started lasting several months and Ukraine started to retake its own territories. After this, Putin announced the partial mobilization for approximately 300,000 people. 
officially. And after all of this, Russia still cannot win any single major battle. And so, if Russia decides to do another partial mobilization, most certainly way more people will start asking the questions that most likely something is wrong. In addition to that, the events inside Putin's inner circle are also far from perfect for him. Such as, for example, this so-called popularity contest that Evgeny Prigozhin, along with his Wagner mercenary group, is doing in Bakhmut. And even though they cannot achieve any significant progress, Putin still sees his dependability on Prigozhin's Wagner. And so, since we started talking about this mercenary unit, according to still, once again, the same report by the Institute for the Study of War, the battle for Bakhmut is near its culmination. Which pretty much means they can no longer do any presentable progress and instead of doing offensive, they will switch to defensive mode in order to stall Ukrainians as long as possible so that they have enough time to regroup themselves. And in order to achieve this and save the manpower, Russians reportedly started sending 10 to 15 people, literally suicide squads. And in the meantime, they are trying to bring as many reinforcements, military vehicles and military equipment as possible in preparation for the final stand. And in case Ukraine is victorious here as well, which, let's be honest, most likely they will, the war might be over way sooner than expected. And if you don't want to miss these events as soon as they start happening, just please once again subscribe to my channel, it only takes one click. And if you want to support my work due to ongoing demonetization, please consider becoming my channel member, use the PayPal link or become my Patreon, where you receive early access to the additional content. All the other useful links can be found on the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tarishi, and see you tomorrow.